uh, to discuss with anybody that was prepared to, to stand on behalf of the group and talk to the federal government. Later on, uh, we were told that uh, it was not so. So this is not, we must not confuse it. The federal government is prepared to talk to any credible leaders, you know, uh, standing on behalf of the group. And if amnesty becomes one of the conditions because the group appreciates uh, those, that the conversation and we reach certain points, maybe it could become an option. But I have never seen the leader of a nation whose, le whose nation is under attack and now saying amnesty for the attackers with that condition. I've never had it anywhere in history. Just to recap all that you've said, you're saying that amnesty is on the cards or could be on the cards. It's not been jettisoned as an option. We have never jettisoned anything. The truth is that how do you offer amnesty? Look at what happened in Kano. How travelers were mercilessly murdered in cold blood. Now, if the president of a nation, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, were to announce an amnesty to a group that has not come out to negotiate with it, and all the conversations we are holding now, nobody knows the, 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 the thinking of members of the group, if you're on the call for amnesty, how does the president and commander-in-chief announce amnesty without pro-conversation, without pro-negotiation, without agreeing on anything? What it will mean is that the president has given up. <laughs> And that is what it will be. It is a, a complete abdication. Uh, let me jump in here. Just a moment. Could you tell us? Is the federal. Never ruled anything. But amnesty or no amnesty can only come up in the process of a, a, a conversation, a negotiation. You know, it can't be announced without conditions. I've never had it anywhere in the world. Could you tell us? Is the federal government at any level, formally or informally, discussing with any group, any representation? from Boko Haram? The unfortunate thing about this uh, whole show of Boko Haram is that um, even our own community leaders in the north have found it very difficult to come at credible and say we are speaking on behalf of this group. Um, for example, for all this period of maybe the last one year that the government has offered uh, its readiness to negotiate, we have not seen any group of people come up, either within the north or within the group, saying, look, we can stand on behalf of this group, and if we talk to the government, we believe that um, anything we agree with the government, they will stand by it. There is nobody taking responsibility. So what we hear are politicians making outlandish statements for purely political and partisan reasons that have nothing to do with the true security issues on the ground. And so, the president of a country cannot, we can't play politics when people are being killed. And we must, not under, we must clearly understand that if we have not handled this issue with maturity in our conversations, in our statements, and with all the effort that the president and the federal government have made, maybe this country will not be where it is now. Because okay, the intention so, well, of this group really is to strike at the core that holds this country together. And we have done everything, for example, to contain this group in the north, and indeed also uh, to let Nigerians understand that this group does not stand for Muslims. It does not stand for Islam. And we have continued to hold on to that argument and Nigerians have understood. So right, we must not, uh, what is going on now are political statements. So, and they're not coming from Boko Haram. And I think that the Sultan of Sokoto's statement was done with good intention. It was done in good faith. And uh, we believe that the Sultan will still be very, very critical to any conversation. But that can be the first option by people that have not negotiated with you. So at the moment, the federal government is not in any form of discussion formally or informally or by proxy with any representation or representatives of Boko Haram? But the reality is that uh, uh, because this group is very fluid, very, very fluid, um, you can't say at which point who is a clear leader. You people, like I told you, look at the situation in Borono State. The governor came out and the leaders, they said, look, they discussed and had a ceasefire. Shortly after it was denied <laughs> by other members of the group and the killings have continued. So the reality is that we're dealing um, with a group that is very fluid, uh, that is buried in the, in the population, and uh, that is using guerrilla attacks uh, on innocent citizens. And uh, we believe that maybe there is hardly any clear one single person that can speak on behalf of this group at the moment. So even if there are conversations and attempts at different levels, they are not something that the federal government can hold on to and say that there is a conversation with critical leaders of this group. Okay, so there is some form of discussion going on, perhaps behind the scene, but 
as you say, you I, can't I, say. I believe that. I believe maybe there, are, there, there may be, be individuals because at a point you remember that uh, there are groups that say they had the authority of Boko Haram to speak on their behalf. So maybe individuals uh, like you heard from the government of Bruno may be talking to some members of the group, but it is too early because we have not seen any credible uh, conversation uh, or credible leadership from the group that can come out and say, look, we are speaking on behalf of this group and at least preponderant members agree with us. So, so long as we have not come to that stage, uh, we cannot right now say that there is any credible conversation. Uh, at the moment. And that is what we are looking for. Uh, if there are leaders in the north or anywhere that have the, um, uh, the, 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 the authority of the group, the agreement of the group to speak on their behalf, the federal government has made it very clear. The president has said so. I have said so on behalf of the federal government that we will continue to look forward to that day when either those leaders in the north that have contact with them and can speak on their behalf or the group itself coming out to say, look, we are ready to talk. Then we can talk. But the conditions for, con for, for, for that conversation uh, cannot be proclaimed uh, without any agreement. Okay, allow me to come in here. But, uh, still on security matters, uh, perhaps you, you talked about political statements. Uh, tell us if this is also a, a political statement from the former governor of Abia State that accused the government and security agents of... Uh, were throwing bombs all over the country, and at the end of the day, say so it's Boko Haram. That is, this, this is the point I am making, that politicians are speaking um, without responsibility. Uh, what we are hearing is so strange. How do you, you know, uh, for example, imagine that somebody who has been the chief security officer of a state will come out and make outlandish statements against the security forces of his country? Now, let me make this clear to Nigerians. Some of the things we have heard and read on the pages of newspapers coming from leaders, some of them elected leaders still sitting at different levels of government, others former leaders, uh, are so strange that um, if not that the armed forces of this nation are very patriotic and have sworn to lay down their lives for this nation, they will be discouraged. Now, there is no week that goes without armed forces, security forces, police being attacked in some northern parts of the country. There is no week we don't lose soldiers or lose policemen in the face of this war on terror. And it is strange to say, for example, that the police are bombing police stations to kill themselves, or that soldiers are attacking themselves to die. Uh, what would be the purpose? Well, he said, I must uh, he said to, to increase the security uh, I, must, I must make it clear that... No, let, let, me, let, me, let me conclude. I think the statement credited to the former governor of Abia cannot be taken in isolation. So far, people have been making such careless statements. And I want to call on them, please. They, we must appreciate the great job that the armed forces have done in stabilizing and containing the attacks in this country. And we must, see, we must know that many people are losing their children. The soldiers belong to families. They have mothers, they have parents, they have brothers and sisters, the policemen. They are dying, you know, every month. The least we can say is to appreciate the role of the armed forces and the critical job they are doing for this nation. And no matter what we say, the armed forces of Nigeria are still the frontline armed forces in this nation, in this continent. They have done a great job. They are doing a very great job in the most difficult circumstances, and I think we should appreciate them. There is every attack in this nation has been claimed by Boko Haram or some segments of it. For somebody to come out and make those Atlantic statements against the armed forces of Nigeria is so unfortunate. It's so unpatriotic, and it was grossly irresponsible. Well, uh, another issue uh, that, uh, well, we're really still on the same issue on security is, uh, well, you talked about statements, perhaps, uh, as a government. What, what do you do as a government? Do you call such people? If you say, well, he's been in government before, some would say, maybe he's speaking from experience, perhaps maybe they've done that thing in the past just to increase security votes. Has he been invited? Well, I, I, uh, uh, well, maybe, um, uh, uh, I'm, uh, let me just say this. You know, th there are people in this nation that we expect that based on their own honor and sense of responsibility, they will guard their tongues. They will be a bit more responsible when they comment on sensitive issues affecting the nation. And if government was to go and start questioning those people, maybe some of them say because they anticipate that they will be invited, to, again, the whole newspapers will come forward, the, the television stations, you know, and then what we are trying to avoid is a situation in which 
government will be looked upon as if we are so insensitive, we are intolerant of the opposition. Uh, and so government has 